These are photos of Native Americans in Yosemite Valley, before it was a national park. Today, national parks like Yosemite are prized for being untouched landscapes, as if to say that people are separate from nature, that real nature is a place we can visit and take photos of, but ultimately leave. Recently though, nature has reminded us that we aren't really separate. In California, unhealthy forests have collided with climate change, and it's led to a deadly situation. But native tribes across the state, who have been stewards of the land for generations, they know how to make the landscape more resilient. And surprisingly, it involves a little bit of fire. When Euro-American settlers first stumbled upon Yosemite Valley, it looked different than it does today. There were wide open meadows with flowers. The trees were further apart. These were not natural landscapes. These were created and curated by indigenous peoples. This is Beth Rose Middleton Manning. She's a professor of Native American studies at UC Davis. The settlers assumed that this is just what nature looked like on its own. But really, they had walked into a garden that was thousands of years old and sustained by Native Americans. And one of the tools that these tribes used to care for the land was low intensity fires, known today as cultural burning. This might seem counterintuitive, right? We've seen how deadly wildfires can be, but it's not the full story. We're burning to restore the land, restore the resources, restore water. This is Ron Good. He's the tribal chairman of the North Fork Mono Tribe, and he practices cultural burning. Fire plays an important role in keeping an ecosystem healthy. For thousands of years, tribes around the world have used low intensity fires to renew the land. These small fires make room for new plants to grow. They release seeds trapped inside pine cones, and they also clean up overgrown and dying vegetation, the kind of thing that fuels catastrophic wildfires. But with colonization, indigenous people were forced out of their homelands. Their land stewardship was outlawed, actually made illegal on public lands and on private lands. So I believe that's a strong contributor to the unhealthy forest conditions that we see today. Beginning around 1770, Spanish missions across the West Coast prohibited burning. They didn't understand why Native Americans were using fire and established severe penalties for it, including death. After the gold rush, settlers were preoccupied with what they could extract from the land. In 1850, California outlawed cultural burning in a cruel set of laws that also removed tribes from their homelands. After that, there were several major forest fires in the West, which led to a national fire suppression policy. So remember, only you can prevent forest fires. The message was clear, all fire is dangerous. Alongside this extreme fire suppression, timber companies and foresters began planting trees in dense groves like crops. It's easy to assume that a healthy forest should be crowded with trees, but that isn't right for every ecosystem. You have to have a segment of openness in the sense of that sunlight, rain, snow, all that can get through to the ground, to the surface. Too many trees can create water stress, especially during a drought. It's too many straws in the ground. Plants with shorter roots end up drying out. And after planting these dense forests, people just left them alone. Trees would rot and plants would become overgrown. Who grows a garden like that, you know? You, you don't grow a garden like that. You got a garden, you got to tend it. So we had these crowded forests that started to build up with plant debris, the perfect fuel for uncontrollable wildfires. Climate change has only made this worse. The weather is getting hotter and drier. When you combine this with nearly 100 years of bad forest management, it's a recipe for disaster. By 1970, the National Park Service realized their mistake. Without small fires to open up pine cones and make room for new growth, there were no new sequoias. So they shifted course. But you can't fully shift course without the knowledge of Native tribes, who have managed the land for generations. Indigenous people yet have been excluded from many of these conversations led by state and federal agencies, and sometimes private companies that are large landowners. Agencies are beginning to do more prescribed fires, but these are different from the cultural burns developed by Native tribes. Prescribed burns are used primarily to just get rid of the plant debris that feeds a wildfire. Your primary focus is, I'm burning for acreage and I'm burning to reduce fuel load. Well, that's exactly what you do, but then your land is not restored. Cultural burning, on the other hand, is part of a longer-term engagement between Native people and the land. For example, after a burn, the ashes are raked into the soil to encourage plant regrowth. If the goal is restoration, the entire process looks different. You don't just burn and leave. That's why Beth Rose takes her classes out to learn from Ron, so they can see firsthand his caretaking process. Restoring our forests doesn't mean making them hands-off, protected spaces where nature runs wild. The forests need us to actively care for the land in order to be healthy and resilient. 
as Native Americans have done for thousands of years. Many of the bushes that we're now burning haven't actually been burned for about 120 years, and they're crying. And yes, they need us as much as we need them. They need us to come out here and put fire on the land. Have you been affected by any of the recent wildfires? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about cultural burning, you can check out our full article. We've got a link in the video description. Or visit our website, universityofcalifornia.edu slash fig1. And be sure to click that subscribe button for more figure one videos.